What is up 2020 Flight Simmers? And welcome back to our fourth installment in our VFR flight training course. So in today's episode, we are going to take what we've learned from our past three episodes, and now we're going to apply that and create our very first VFR flight plan. So if you want to learn how to create your very own VFR flight plan using Sky Vector or Little Nav Maps, then stay tuned right here on 2020 Flight Simmers. We're going to hop right into this today, and the first application we are going to look at Skyvector.com. Now, this has some awesome VFR flight charts here that we can use, and it gives a lot of good points of interest. So for today's flight plan that we're going to go over, we are going to be starting from Florence Airport, and we're going to be making our way all the way down to North Myrtle Beach. Now, both of these airports are Class Delta airports, and we know that because of the dashed blue line around both airports, and within that dashed blue circle, we have a broken box here that depicts the maximum altitude for this airspace. So to create the flight plan, all we need to do is hover over the departure airport, give it a right click, and then go right here to the plan button. Then what you're going to notice is the airport ICAO will appear right here in the departure box. Then we're going to go right down here to the arrival airport, do the exact same thing, hit plant, and boom! There we go, the destination airport is put in right there. Now we can get some more information either by hovering over the airport and right clicking, and it will bring up this dialog box here that we can get some information. So right here, if you hover over the airport, it will bring up all the different approaches and departures for that airport, as well as the much needed airport diagram. And if you click on that diagram, it brings up a fantastic airport diagram and gives you all the necessary information you're gonna need like field elevation or frequencies that you're going to use and heck even all of your taxiways for your taxiing to the runway what i like to do for any of my vfr flights is print one of these out for my departure and arrival airport this way i can have those handy before i get there and while i'm taxiing so i can kind of figure out how to get to the runway so now, as you can see, it put a beautiful magenta line from point A to point B for us, showing a direct path. But as a VFR flyer, we may not want to take a direct path, and we want to deviate from that a little bit, maybe to see some sights around the simulator. Now, to do that, all you need to do is hover over that magenta line, hold down the left mouse button, and you can drag and drop this wherever you want to. So we can come right down here over this train bridge and we release it. And as you're going to see, we have a list here of different options. Now, the first one that's going to come up is the closest airport to where we place this magenta line. And that's not what we want. Second is a waypoint that is closest to this line. And I think we're going to pick that one. But if you didn't want to pick that one, all you have to do is click on the very last and that will give you exact GPS coordinates. But again, we're going to pick the closest waypoint and hit the plan button. And as you can see, it then brings that right up here in our flight plan box. Now, if we look at this flight plan into North Myrtle Beach, it comes drastically close to this Class Charlie airspace here. Now we haven't gone over much of Class Charlie airspaces, but we can see that the Class Charlie airspace extends from 1,200 feet to 4,000 feet. So I think we're going to be in that, so we need to make sure that we are not near this airspace because that is a big no-no. So all we have to do is the exact same thing, hover over our magenta line, hold down the left click button, bring it up to where we want, and drop it. Again, I am going to go ahead and use the closest waypoint, hit the plan button, and it just so happened to be right there. Perfect. Now that brings us way far away from this Class Charlie airspace. 
we don't have to worry about that and it kind of brings us away from this airport as well so we don't have to worry about any inbound traffic there so as you can see that's pretty much it in creating a flight plan here on sky vector but there is one more thing on the flight plan box here that we did not talk about. Well, two actually. One, you never want to hit the briefing and filing because we are not a live airplane, so you're never going to use that. But if you pick a departure and destination and you want to see if there are any pre-planned routes, all you have to do is left click on the route button and it will bring you up all the pre-planned routes with distance and estimated time. If you decide that you want to go ahead and use that one, all you have to do is hover over it and left click on that and it will bring up that new flight plan for you. There's a couple other bits of information on here. We can see the total distance is going to be 56.4 miles and our estimated time in route is going to be 28 minutes. All right, so I think that's going to finish us up with Sky Vector. If anybody has any questions on creating a VFR flight plan in Sky Vector, go ahead and post that down in the comments. I would love to answer your questions for you. Oh, and by the way, while you're down there, if you'd like to support the channel, smash on that thumbs up button, click that subscribe, and make sure you don't forget to tick that little bell. All right, so now we're going to be moving into the second part of the episode today. Thank you. All right, so now let's take a look at little nav map here, and there's a couple things that you might notice your screen looks a little bit different from my screen. So on my screen, I have all these different information tabs all around my main map here, and you're going to want to know how did I get those there? Well, all you have to do is come right up here to the top, and there are these little icons here, and if you click on those, it will give you the individual information tabs. You can place those information tabs wherever you want on the screen. I just kind of find that this is the best layout for me, and I'm used to using it this way. So after you situate all these information tabs the way you want on your little nav map, what you want to do is go over to your search tab, wherever you have that, and pull up the airport menu. Now, if you look over on the search tab and find, hey, I don't have a airport menu well that's pretty simple all you need to do to get that is to come right over here to this little bar and left click on that and you can pick whatever you want to show up here so again if i say let's pick user points it will now bring user point tab up here i don't want that so i can go ahead and clear that away now below the airport tab it's going to bring up a bunch of other different options for you and you can pull up lighted airports towered airports and so on but because we know where we're going to start from today, all we need to do is put the ICAO right here in the ident, and that is going to be KFLO. Now when you do that, it's going to bring that airport up right down below, and if you double left click on it, it will bring that right center on your map screen. Now to add this as our departure airport, if you hover over that and right click on that, all you need to do is go down to set as a flight plan departure and it will go ahead and pop you right over here in your flight planning menu as your departure airport. Perfect. Now the next thing we need to do is to come right up here and add our destination airport, which is KCRE. Again, we can see right down below and if you double left click on that, it will bring up the airport right center screen for you. And again, if you right click and go down to add as destination, it will now make a direct flight from point A to point B. Very similar to Sky Vector. So now if we zoom in a little bit here on the little nav map, you have a couple other options here. At the top, you can increase or decrease the detail that you see on your screen. So if I increase the screen detail, what it's going to do is make everything kind of pop off a little bit bigger and a little bit bigger. But the problem is when you zoom out, it is going to make this very confusing to look at, as you can see. Similarly, like in Sky Vector, to add a waypoint, all you need to do is to hover over your line here. But you're not going to hold down the left mouse button, you're just going to click the left mouse button. You can then drag that when you find where you want to release that 
all you have to do is to hover over that location and click that mouse button one more time and there you go it's now entered that waypoint into our flight plan which is right over here on the left now as you remember it put us very close to this charlie airspace right here oh and the other cool thing this can actually show you airspaces. So if you left click over top of this airspace and come right over here to the information tab, if you scroll down, it will show you what class of airspace that is. And it will also show you the minimum and maximum altitudes for that airspace. So it's pretty cool. It's got all of this information in it for you. Now the next thing we want to do is add the KOOK waypoint, but we're going to do this a little bit different way now. So now we're going to come back up here to the search, and because we're not trying to search an airport, now we're going to be searching a nav aid. So now that we click on nav aid, all we have to do is enter the waypoint name. And when you do, you're going to see that waypoint pop right up in here. Again, if you left click on it, it will put a beautiful little circle around that. And if you right click and go down to add to flight plan, it will then add that into our flight plan. Now with little nav map, there's a couple other things that we can do that makes this program pretty sweet. Now if you come over here to the top, well, one thing, we can add a altitude in this flight plan. So in today's flight, we're going to be traveling at 2,500 feet. If you hit the enter button, it will now set 2,500 feet as our planned altitude. So as you can see, that's why I like having this flight pan elevation profile on the bottom because it's pretty spread out and it gives me a lot of detail here. Now on this flight plan elevation profile, it's going to show right here that your minimum elevation is 1,500 feet, and we're going to be traveling at 2,500 feet. Now there's another cool thing that Little Nav Map uses is the Fuel Report and Current Performance tab. Current Performance is while you're actually in flight, and it will show your plane on the map. But if we go over to Fuel Report, we can now see the exact plane that we want to fly. Now, if you're unsure on how to set any of this up, we've gone over all of this in a previous episode, which I will put links for down below. That will show you how to get all of this airplane information into Lil Nav Maps. I've already downloaded all that. I need to go up to Aircraft menu and click Open Aircraft Performance, and now I can pick whichever airplane I'm going to be using for today. So let's say we're going to use the Cessna 208, hit the open tab, and now it recalculates. So it also brings up a lot of information about this airplane, as well as the climb and descent rates, and the fuel that's going to be used on the trip. So now that we have gone over that and set everything up for our flight plan for today, what this flight planning menu also allows us to do is if we scroll to the right, it's going to now bring up a bunch of different information that's going to be pretty important on maintaining our flight path for today. So feel free to go ahead and explore this because there's so much information here, it's hard to go over in one video. Now, if anybody has any questions on how to use little nav maps, please go ahead and post a comment down below. And if you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button and tick that little bell. You don't want to miss any of our future episodes, just like this one. Alright, so I think we're going to end the video here today. I hope I was able to get enough information, everyone, so you can create your very own VFR flight plan on either Sky Vector or Little Nav Maps. I want to thank everybody for sticking around and watching the video with us today. If you have any questions on either of these two applications, please go ahead and post that down below. Again, I love answering those questions. So to all my flight simmers out there, Keep the blue side up. We will see you on the next one. Thanks for watching, everyone.